The Nürburgring, June 2020. Strict security rules, the highest hygiene standards. Everything for one goal. Everything for this DTM season. It's a giant step for us. I mean, who could ever thought of four weeks ago um, that this is going to happen? Obviously, we had the high hopes that this is going to happen. We never lost the faith. Setting an example in these troubled Corona times. Many things have come to a halt, but wheels are turning in the DTM. Test days, finally, it is back again. This special motorsport feeling. I personally haven't been in the car for seven or eight months now. Feeling back alive again, it's like, uh, yeah, after such a long break. And it was just amazing to be back in the race car. Now we are back to business and, yeah, it feels, feels good. I think it, it has not been easy. Um, but uh, motorsport can for sure be a role model. The days are long, but nobody is complaining. Instead, everybody enjoys finally being able to do again what they love. We're sitting at home for four weeks doing uh, basically nothing. Uh, you cannot do much. And uh, that's how, that's when you started to, to miss the car more and more. It really just gave me a lot of value of, of how much motorsport means to me, you know, because we take these things for granted every day. And it's important to realize that we are so blessed, let's say, to be here. The test is closed to the public, but lap after lap is being completed to lay the foundation for the season. We have those sessions from 8.30 in the morning to 6 o'clock in, in the evening, fully packed. We plan up to 200 laps per day, which is definitely a lot. The body can feel it. You finally, you know, uh, give it some g-force again and after eight months out of the car uh, it's normal that after the first day the muscles are a bit sore but uh, it's a good feeling it's not only in the pit boxes and on the track that people are working after hours in the background it's the same thing 18 races have been confirmed not an easy task in times of covid 19. we worked very hard especially the last three four weeks to to get the cal calendar done uh, and I think we came out with something really good. Uh, we've been maybe one of the first, or maybe the first one with a complete calendar for the whole year. The plan is ready. Let's get 2020 underway, a season in which many things will be new. And for one person in particular, it will be a really special one. Robert Kubica, a big name from the motorsport world. And now, the DTM grid is his new home. A rookie he may be, but one with plenty of experience. Robert Kubica has already experienced much and driven many cars. Now, DTM for the first time at the age of 35. I'm a very young and new uh, guy, okay, I'm not young anymore, unfortunately, but uh, into the DTM it will be my first, uh, first year and uh, a lot of things to discover. Robert Kubica. But it's just a name that sounds good, or is it? <laughs> All right. Good. Who doesn't know Robert Kubica? For sure I know him. He's a very hard racer, uh, super quick in anything he's driven. Probably one of the greatest talent of his generation when he was driving with uh, Jamie Green and with uh, Lewis Hamilton and Nico Rosberg. Kubica was never world champion but he was always up there front so uh, it's always a pleasure to race against those guys. A textbook career. Go-karts, single-seaters and then the move up to the pinnacle. With BMW, he graduated into Formula One, and now he has a BMW engine in the DTM, coming full circle, so to speak. Yeah, it's, it's a bit coming home. Uh, of course, uh, BMW gave me a, a great opportunity to debut in Formula One. A uh, long time already, but in uh, 2006, uh, I was much younger. Well, it's obviously great to have Robert with us as well. I mean, obviously he's with a, with a private team, but um, nevertheless, he's got the same package. He will receive all the information, everything he needs, and I'm quite sure he will surprise a lot of people. Robert Kibitz's life is one of highs and lows. Accidents, surgery. For a long time, it was even uncertain whether he would be able to get into a race car at all. But he succeeded in making the comeback, even into Formula One. He's a real fighter. He has a big story to tell and to have someone who has gone through what he has gone through 
in, in, the, in such a high level championship again. Easy life, is, is, I never like it, so, uh, but definitely a DTM is, is a difficult uh, uh, task for, for myself. But I'm sure he's not, uh, he's not here to only you know, gather that applause, he wants to stand up on the podium and, uh, and celebrate good results. Robert the First. He was the first Polish driver in Formula One, and now he's the first Polish driver in the DTM. Kubica is unbelievably popular in his home country which is also why he considers himself as an ambassador for Polish motorsport. When I started uh, very young, when I was doing karting, I was kind of exotic uh, to be a racing driver, karting driver. And uh, now the things have changed. There are a few very talented young Polish uh, karting drivers. I'm helping also a new generation, you know, to make uh, motorsport more popular in Poland. With his involvement, the DTM will become even better known in Poland as well. And where does his journey take him? Robert, are you still hungry? Hungry? Well, I have eaten. <laughs> no, I, I'm realistic, uh, also hungry to, to perform well. And I, I know you need to have all ingredients and, uh, and for sure I'm missing a lot of knowledge about DTM, a lot of experience, so uh, those two things are for now the key. And so now we say, welcome Robert Kibitza. But others are new to the DTM as well, or have made a transfer. At WRT, everything is different to 2019. So how exactly do you attract new drivers, Monsieur Voss? Maybe the best would have to uh, had uh, Engström and uh, Schneider in the car, but uh, it, they were not available. They do have a sense of humour, those Belgians. And they also have a philosophy. We try to translate our racing experience into, uh, into those drivers which needs, you know, sometimes small help there and there. And we have in the team some very experienced people. And a 21-year-old brings a breath of fresh air. Fabio is coming from Formula Cars, um, has shown some great potential. It's a driver which has to learn but has what it takes to be there. It's great to welcome him uh, in DTM. I think, uh, yeah, more Swissness can, can never hurt here. My expectations are maybe to get a podium this season, so let's see what there's possible. Fabio Scherer's teammate is Ferdinand Habsburg. He made his DTM debut in 2019, but now he has a new team. The expectations are to enjoy the championship, coming back, to enjoy the Getting back in the car after waiting for so long, which uh, was a, a long wait, but um, well, I'm, I'm definitely aiming to try to win races, considering I have the most competitive car on the grid. That sounds like self-confidence, but perhaps he can follow in the footsteps of Jonathan Aberdyne, who surprised many at WRT last season and ended up being the best rookie. Now he has a contract from BMW, new goals included. Jonathan. I think has shown last year what he's capable of doing even in a private car. We were fighting towards the end of the year for pole positions and podiums. So I would like to take one step up from that and start to fight for race wins. Jonathan Aberdyne and Sheldon van der Linde, two South Africans at BMW, a strong duo. Two South Africans in the DTM and two in BMW now. To have two in the same manufacturer for a factory team is a dream come true for us both and uh, we need to do our country proud. And there are two Austrians at BMW as well this season, which is because of this young man. Hello, my name is Lukas Hauer. I'm back in DTM. I left it at 2018. Now I'm back with BMW. I know him from DTM from the past when he was driving for Mercedes and uh, we had a, a lot of good fights together quick guy. Looking forward to that he's my teammate and, and to work with him together. What a phenomenal drive from this young Austrian. He has been superb. Yeah. Lucas Auer wins. Yeah. Timo Glock P2. Yeah. Well, he's a hard racer. Um, I experienced or we experienced that a few times. I feel very confident and, and really looking forward to, to get some wins in. So, welcome back, Lucas. And show us your new car, please. 
For me, a lot of things have changed. We have a new engine, a four-cylinder turbo engine, around 600 horsepower. The cars are lighter, but we have a bit less aerodynamics. So when you are new to a manufacturer and to a team, a lot of things are happening. First, you have to introduce and to meet all the new people. Secondly, you have to make the seat fit. And I'll show you a bit around. Here we have my seat. It's perfectly set up for me. Also, for your information, it is quite a challenge to make the seat fit. Obviously, I'm quite small, so there's a lot of foam and it takes around one complete day in order to make everything perfect, that you feel confident, that you have enough support on your ribs because we have such high G-forces and then it takes quite a bit of time in order to get everything perfect and that the seat is also fitting in the car. Because you can only be successful if everything is in place. You know, if somebody wins the championship and, and is, is, is pretty dominant, the, the package is right. Yeah? And, but BMW, they have worked uh, super hard over the winter and I'm, I'm, I'm very sure that, that we will be on it this year. Obviously, steering wheel has changed quite a bit for me. With the new engine, you have, for example, the anti-lag system, which prevents the engine from having a turbo hole. We have, I have the push to bars which is a massive strategic game for qualifying and the race and the DIS, but this we had already back in 2018. And push to pass has even more power this season. That promises close duels. Okay guys, I hope you enjoy the DPM season. Normally I'm getting quite quickly used to a new car. Let's see how it goes this year. Cheers, have fun. And Lucas Auer missed that in 2019, a season that was really exciting. The 2019 DTM season. It was a very special one, indeed. There were more changes than ever before. New drivers, new rules, new tracks, a new team, and a new engine. But at the end of the day, it was all about one thing. Who would be the 2019 champion? During the season opener at Hockenheim, the weather provided the biggest challenge. It didn't take long for the first action to set in. René Rast tangled with Timo Glock, but Glock saved in a spectacular way. Rast then made a strong recovery until he had closed the gap to race leader Wittmann, the first duel of the Giants. Attempt to overtake the BMW driver Marco Wittmann. Champion versus champion. On board with René Rast, who's got a problem. That's why the gap has increased so much. Oh, and that is just such a shame. The winner of the first race, BMW driver Marco Wittmann. The season actually started super well with a pole position and win, but obviously um, with quite a lot of up and downs during the season. This man dominated proceedings on Sunday. René Rast performed a mega recovery and came out on top. After qualifying, Rast was only 16th on the grid. The next setback seemed to be on the cards, but Rast, determined as ever, worked his way up through the ranks. In the process, he benefited from a daring move. New tyres and a safety car, so two-stop strategy. Copy. During the safety car intervention, Rast came in early for new tyres, giving him an advantage. On lap 22, he made his mandatory pit stop and indeed he crowned his race with victory. Well, here comes a René Rast for the chequered flag to take the win. René Rast wins with a strategy that worked. One of my uh, most craziest races ever I've done, I would say, from P6 into P1 due to safety car. We stopped uh, during the safety car period, got new tires and then passed the field within uh, two or three laps. He's really in the championship now, so very happy. The first race weekend of the new DTM season was also the first time these two made an appearance. Dr. Florian Kamelga and his team are motorsport.
With the Aston Martin, they were the unknown quantity of the season. With ex-champion Paul de Resta, stalwart Daniel Hunkadea, and two newcomers, Jake Dennis and Ferdinand Habsburg, they certainly had a strong lineup. We came here with a task to be in the grid, be competitive, start the season with four cars in Hockenheim in the first race, which we achieved. The second venue on the calendar was a trip down memory lane. The DTM made its comeback to Zolder in Belgium. This is where the story began back in 1984. The return was something special, and so was Philipp Eng's performance. In the first race, the Austrian scored his maiden DTM win. I'm the luckiest and happiest guy on earth right now. Uh, I can't describe. This is a very special feeling. I was dreaming, uh, dreaming of this many, many times in difficult nights when things didn't go to plan. But uh, I'm just the happiest guy alive. He was so close last year, you knew that it would happen one day. Eng scored a fantastic 44 points at Zolder and moved up into the lead of the driver's standings. For me, it was a big thing to be leading one of the most competitive championships. His fellow BMW driver, Wittmann, only had reason to smile prior to the weekend. Heading home from Belgium, he was rather disappointed. Drivers using DRS, Robert Freins using it to defend, Marco Wittmann using it to attack, and he, he punts the back end of Robin Freins, and Robin Freins, the local boy, goes around. It's a shame because, I, of course, I, I destroyed his race and mine as well with a drive-through penalty. I mean, he definitely hit me, but I also didn't have the power to accelerate, so... Uh, so he was guilty? I spun because of him, let's say it that way, yes. For René Rast, it was deja vu. Once again, the Audi driver had to park his car on Saturday. Another technical issue. But again, his response came on the following day. He became the first driver with two race wins this season. Again on Sunday, and Hockenheim we also won on Sunday, had a DNF on Saturday, just like uh, this weekend. Um, if we just win every second race, I think it should be enough. The third race meeting, Misano, Italy, and a huge surprise. MotoGP star Andrea De Vizioso joined the field as a guest starter. Yeah, Andrea is a very professional racing driver in the MotoGP. He is somebody, uh, he's not going for second place. He jumped in the car and was straight away on pace, even in the race. The level is so high from the driver, so I don't have really a big expectation. Davizioso wasn't in contention for victory. And that is what people thought about Marco Wittmann. He was last on the grid after engine problems. However, Wittmann pulled off a resurrection. With a spectacular victory, he was back in the hunt for the title. We knew from the back we have to take some risks, so we took it lap one and we, we hoped for the safety car and luckily it came, of course. Um, but I have to say it was a lot more difficult than it probably looked from the outside. Rast came second and moved up into the championship lead for the first time after five races, with Wittmann in second place. And who else but these two would feature in the centre of the action in the second race, right after the start. We focused on the front cars. Robin Freins had just got it nailed perfectly. Rene Rast trying to squeeze out as Jonathan Aberdeen comes down the inside. There's going to be contact. Marco Wittmann is out onto the runoff area. Go fully into my car. Guys, what an idiot. Marco turned in. I had to turn in. And then, uh, yeah, I think I got a hit from, from left-hand side and then sl uh, slid into to Marco. Really sorry for him because he couldn't continue. Um, but I couldn't, I couldn't do anything in that moment. One driver to benefit from this incident was Nico Muller. The Swiss scored his first win of the season and his first victory in three years. Yes, Nico, P1, P1, perfect job today, perfect job today. We all have worked extremely hard and for quite a long time for this uh, win. I mean, it's uh, been a long draw, nearly three years, and uh, 
just super proud of my boys. They've done a good work. Audi has given us an awesome car. The RS5 DTM worked mega good here in Misano. And uh, to bring home a victory just feels awesome. And now we have a very good reason to stay on tonight and uh, have a good party. Round four, Nuremberg, Norris Ring. Every year, the only street circuit on the race calendar has a little bit of Monaco feeling. The event is where the stars and starlets meet. The main talking point, the possibility of having a race in the real principality. We talked about that with Gerhard, uh, Gerhard Berger a little bit and uh, maybe it will be a possibility one day. We, we have to see a few things, but I think this series is, uh, is a wonderful series, very competitive. In the race on Saturday, things weren't always clear for René Rast. The start, totally messed up by the 2017 champion. The result, he dropped all the way to the back of the field. However, he reacted like a champion should, going on to win the race after all. Impressive. One day later, Rast was the center of attention again, but this time not all by himself. Now, together, with fellow Audi driver Nico Muller. So Spengler goes through into the lead of the race. Rast is fighting back meanwhile as it goes through the Jolla Rezzi's contact and he's off and around. The collision between Muller and Rast, a disaster for Audi. Very disappointing for, for him, for myself, for the whole team and it's something that is the last thing you want to ha see happening. But um, I think, yeah, I got a penalty for it. I accept that. But I think the contact could have been avoided from both sides. And the one who benefited most? Bruno Spengler. His fifth victory in Nuremberg gave him the title of Mr. Norris Ring. Now I won the fifth time there uh, this year, so it was again very emotional for me. In the previous three races, Marco Wittmann wasn't particularly fortunate and only scored four points during this part of the season. The title seemed far off. However, he turned the tables on the fifth race weekend as the DTF came to Assen. At the track that is known as the Cathedral of Speed, he started from pole position for the mid-season race and went on to win. The next day, he proved that this was no fluke. From last on the grid to the podium, no problem for Wittmann. Frines tries to make the Audi as wide as possible as he tries to generate temperature into the tyres. Marco Wittmann goes around the outside. Racing room is left and Wittmann surely will go through here. And indeed, Wittmann has. Great recovery saw Wittmann finish a sensational second behind surprise winner, Mike Rockenfeller. It was all about tyre managing and it was really critical, you know. It got a lot of vibration in the car. The tyres felt like they will go off the wheels already. Um, so it was really on the edge. But now to finish on the second place, coming from last without a safety car, without any incidents, is incredible. 46 points on a single weekend. More than anyone else so far this season. Wittmann had his title campaign back on track. Brands Hatch, a circuit with a long history in motorsport. And another chapter was added this weekend. For the very first time, the British Aston Martin brand presented its DTM car in a race on British soil. It's obviously the home race of the, of the brand. Aston Martin sits in UK and Brands Hatch is an iconic track as well. So an iconic brand on an iconic track. It was a special occasion for the Aston Martin drivers. First and foremost, Paul de Resta. He had a great opening day with fourth place on the grid and there was even more in store. We have three red lights, four. When the lights go out, we will be racing. Out go the lights and Marco Wittmann then gives it an absolute football. So too does Lloyd Duval. Paul de Resta with a blistering start, gets past everybody. Paul de Resta with a lightning start. However, his luck didn't last long. A jump start blew Paul de Resta's chances of victory. I think Paul had a spot on a start. Whether that was then uh, uh, too early or not is a decision by the stewards, which I don't question. This wasn't the only unfortunate situation for Aston Martin. Jake Dennis was hit by Timo Glock right after the start, and his race was over as a result. First across the line was Marco Wittmann, keeping up his good performance. Well before that, Pietro Fittipaldi had had the biggest crash of the season. He hit the barriers in qualifying. Almost unbelievably, he escaped unscathed. One day later, René Rast was back to winning ways. After a drought of four races, 
he dominated the field again. The outcome, poor position, victory and an increased lead in the championship standings. Pole position, I think pole position was the key to the success today because the pace in the race was not outstanding. It was okay, but not outstanding. Two thirds of the season were in the books as the DTM returned to Germany, to the Lausitz ring. The Euro Speedway turned out to be a key point in the battle for the championship. And it was the venue where the first title was already sealed. René Rast scored what was already his sixth pole position of the season. So far, he had scored 27 valuable championship points in qualifying sessions alone, far more than any other driver. However, René Rast had only scored one lights to flag win so far, and this time, once again, something got in the way. As all of a sudden, René Rast is slowing. René Rast has got a problem, René Rast has slowed. So Nico Muller picks up the lead of the race from Marco Vettman from Jamie Green. Rennie Rast, the points leader. It looks to be a fault with the car, a problem for Rennie Rast. This is curtains because Rennie Rast is out of the race. Yeah, very disappointing. Obviously very frustrated, um, you know, leading the race. And again, a technical uh, problem is always... Uh, yeah, not great. Um, 25 points, which we lost today. Rast retired. Muller benefited. His second win of the season. Not only has he never podiumed here at the Lausitz ring, but he's never won here at the Lausitz ring. But there are but a few hundred metres of tarmac away from him being able to change that statement. Because here at the Lausitz ring, Nico Muller wins. Hell uh, yeah! Congrats, guys. Really, really happy for the whole team. Hey, we are back in the game, Nico. Yeah! Well. Rast reacted to his third retirement of the year in champion-like style and pulled off an historic feat by winning the 500th DTM race. It was simply his day, and Audi's too, as the brand sealed the manufacturer's crown. It's a fantastic result for Audi really to win the manufacturers uh, so early through the, through the season. Uh, we have been working very hard over winter and I can only say thanks to everybody. For this man, meanwhile, the title was beyond reach. Marco Wittmann only scored 20 points at Lausitz. Definitely not enough. Today the gap got again bigger um, and it's a proper task now, especially that we are not in, in the shape um, to qualify in front of them, to, to race in front of them. Title number three, bye bye. On the 14th of September 2019, the question was, could René Rast already wrap up the title in the Eiffel? He was in an excellent position to do so. Rast secured his seventh pole position of the season. Nobody else had come close to that number. His opponent, Nico Muller, was well aware that he would have to finish ahead of Rast to keep his title hopes alive. And the Swiss didn't withstand the pressure. At the very beginning, he made a mistake that came with huge consequences. A jump start. Lights just stayed on red for very, very long and the clutch got too hot and closed at one time and not to stall. I gambled on, on going and uh, it, the lights didn't go out or not soon enough, so it was my mistake. After the jump start, Muller was handed a drive-through penalty, but he didn't give up. He tried everything, but it was all in vain. He only finished 16th, not scoring any points. The consequence, as Rast won the race, he had his first match point in the Eiffel. One day later, the showdown. Rast second on the grid, Muller only in 14th. What Rast had to do? Score seven points more than his opponent. And Rast immediately underlined that this was his day. He took the lead right away at the start. Nico Muller did all he could and started his attempt to close up. On top of that, he put his fellow Audi driver under pressure. He was the first of the two to come in for fresh tyres. It all went well. Rast reacted. He stopped as well. No problems there either. And it was enough. He rejoined the race ahead of Muller. However, the battle for the championship hadn't been decided yet. Especially as Rast, running in second place, lost a position to fellow Audi driver Freins. All of a sudden, finishing fifth would be enough for Muller to postpone the decision. 
Rast still needed seven points more than Muller, but now he had only five. That was to change when Jonathan Aberdyne got himself in a position to make the move and overtook Muller. That manoeuvre brought the decision back into René Rast's favour. Behind Jamie Green and Robin Freins, Rast was third across the line and therefore was the new champion. But not everybody knew it immediately. I guess we have done it. Really? Well, Müller is on six, so I guess we are uh, tie points when we didn't get that one, and we should be ahead in victory squad. Hey, champion, good gemacht, klasse, super, danke. Are we champion or not? Uh, we are champion, René. I got the confirmation. Well done, mate. Yeah! 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 Well done, Jamie. Uh, well, sorry. Well done, René. <laughs> I was talking to Jamie before. Well done. Thank you, guys. Awesome. Writing history in some moments sounds not real to me. It sounds like you're talking about somebody else. You really had extremely dominant and really good races. That's how you become second time champion in DTM. Unbelievable performance. He's driving really one step ahead of everybody else. And we know that in DTM the driver quality is so high. René had even the skills to win Formula 1. Here, where it all started, the season also came to an end at Hockenheim. For René Rast, it was his first appearance as the freshly crowned champion. And he acted like a real champion, scoring his seventh race victory of the season. Seven wins in one season, like he had already achieved back in 2018. Rast beyond reach. He had given it his all, even his shoes. Now holding the trophy in my hands is a different feeling. It's, it's just phenomenal, phenomenal and uh, I, want, I want to taste more of that. Obviously a big thanks to my team, uh, they deserve that one and uh, looking forward to this night's party. But it wasn't just René Rast who thrilled the fans. Three guest starters from the Japanese Super GT series were present as well. Six different manufacturers in one race. That was something very special in DTM's history. And this man definitely was in the limelight, Jensen Button the 2009 Formula One World Champion and the 2018 Super GT Champion. It was really good fun. You know, it's been a, a tough weekend because we have so much to learn. Um, but um, today in qualifying, yeah, really happy to be P6. Uh, P9 in the race, yeah, you never want to go backwards, but we had an 18 second pit stop, so it cost us a lot of positions on track. To conclude the season, there was another great show with fire with action at the limit. Standing tall in the storm, Nico Muller crowned his best DTM season to date with his third win of the year. And yet, he only became runner-up because this man outclassed them all. Yeah, in the end, I think René is the deserving champion, even though we would have loved you know, to fight for the absolute maximum, which is the title. But he was just that little bit better, especially in qualifying. Him and his team, they were always putting themselves in a great position for the races and also scoring points already. So. There we, we weren't on the same level, this we have to admit, and just congratulate them for the job they've done. And now we know what we can do better for the future. Even though the trophies were handed out at Hockenheim, the 2019 DTM season wasn't fully over yet. One highlight was still to come, the long-awaited dream race. We have been uh, for many years now working together with the Japanese manufacturers trying to have the possibility to do a race like that. The duel of the DTM and the Super GT series was a special event, with Mount Fuji, Japan's national symbol, as a backdrop. 22 race cars were facing the challenge. Among them, no less than seven DTM cars, with current drivers like champion René Rass. Driving against the Super GT cars, you get goosebumps, because it's a moment you've been waiting for for a very long time, and now it's here. The dream race, the fascination of motorsport. Japan is a great country. The motorsport fans are unique. I've never had to sign so many model cars from me. In true Japanese style, many fans came to watch. 
got to see an unforgettable show. Worthy conclusion to a great season. I think we've really made a big step into the right direction in 2019. DTM is the perfect racing series to be involved as a, as a fan. They can see everything, they can be with us almost, you know. That's fascinating, that's, that's incredible. We didn't see that anywhere in the world. The 2019 DTM season. It was more than just the racetracks. I'm enjoying every minute spending with the fans outside. All the changes in the regulations that uh, Gerhard Berger and his team introduced absolutely worked out. I think TTM is getting stronger and stronger and uh, hopefully we, we're going to start into the next season to improve again. The winter test in Jerez, south of Spain, has started, rocking the beautiful carbon test livery. Uh, unfortunately though, I'm stuck here with my espresso because if you look outside, the sun is shining but there's a lot of fog and uh, that means the track hasn't been cleared for running so we're here and wait until uh, hopefully we get out soon and can, can start off uh, our test program which is very packed. Patience was required. After the season is before the season. Just before Christmas, the first fast laps for 2020 were scheduled. It's great to be back uh, listening to the great sound of the DTM cars. And some got their first ever taste of the magic of the DTM. It's the best thing I ever drove. I think I'm smiling to, to the ear, so it's amazing. It's uh, unbelievable how nice it's to drive and how much horsepower. It's really quick. From the sun in Spain to the ice in Austria. With 600 horsepower, Zell am Z and Rene Rast on the rocks. Yeah, especially with the DTM car, driving on ice is always very special. You put some uh, tires with spikes on the car, very thin ones. So it was working a bit better than, than last year. And it, still, it was a cool event. I mean, lots of spectators and in general, just a cool show. The DTM off-season. Not driving any races doesn't necessarily mean just relaxing and doing nothing. Marco Wittmann knows only too well that there is a lot to do over the winter and sometimes a lot of work is waiting. Service jobs carried out by a real champion. If we are not racing, if we are not testing, I'm, I'm still helping my father out in the garage, so repairing cars. And um, we were, as a garage, we were still allowed to, to be open, you know. So I was quite, quite a lot of times at the garage, really helping out. Um, then, of course, doing the normal gym and, and fitness program at home. This is where the basis is laid, because without fitness, there is no way to clinch the title. Yeah, the day started early, started our flight at uh, 6.20. Obviously, uh, it's always good to, to fly to like a weather like that. Audi are sweating in the training camp at Lanzarote, almost a tradition these days. I've been, been here eight years now, and um, I think there's only one year we've missed a team building week. Yeah, just, it just puts a marker down for the season. Um, you know the season started and it's time to get back into work mode. Well, pedal tennis I, I really like, um, but I wouldn't say I'm great. Uh, I'm really not good in tennis, but pedal tennis is kind of a bit easier to make a game, to get it going and uh, to have some fun. talk about uh, the season, about what happened last season and uh, grew as a team. I think that's quite important to just uh, have a good relationship between everyone. Spirits are upbeat when looking ahead to the race season, but then comes the shock. The corona pandemic is changing everything. In the sporting world, 
fastest times and championship points suddenly become of secondary importance. There is a question mark over the season. Well, it was difficult, no question, but everybody faced the same problem. The season opener at Zolder is cancelled. A new schedule is needed. As everyone, we were stuck back home in home offices. Uh, we were working isolated, more or less. We have not been able to work in teams. Our people did a good job, especially under circumstances where conditions changed every day twice. Uncertain times. Work is being done everywhere to make a season happen, after all. And Ferdinand Habsburg is putting in extra shifts as well. But he's wearing a uniform while doing so. That's what I've been doing, uh, be doing every night from 10 p.m. to 6 a.m. to make sure I can do what I can to help the situation. Yeah, I'm in the army. I have to do my, in Austria we have six months uh, compulsory. And um, it's a pretty cool experience. Um, I feel really privileged actually to be there because um, I got accepted to the uh, sports department. I was being used as a soldier during the corona time to help out with the, uh, the food supply. And me and three other colleagues were doing the night shift. Nico Muller is presenting himself in a very different way. And it shows that whatever happens, action never stops in the DTM. I think it was the Easter weekend. I thought it would be fun to, to do it in a race suit and with a helmet on to, to have something for our fans to post on social media. Uh, luckily, I didn't fall into the water because uh, I think the, the lake was still around 10 degrees cold, so it would have been a bit fresh. But um, yeah, the practice from last summer paid off. Corona times, everything is different. Race drivers in their home offices. This is what that looks like. The DTM Esports Classic Challenge is launched extremely close to reality. I took it very serious. I prepared for the races uh, very similar to for a real race. Yeah, sim racing obviously helps you to, to stay focused, to keep your brain and uh, your muscle memory uh, working. It was for all good fun. I think the show we put on was, was pretty cool also with, with the cars, you know, arriving on the screens and so on. So looked pretty amazing. But the original remains unparalleled. You cannot see the computer anymore. You cannot see the screens. You want to go back on the rear track. You want to, to smell the, uh, the rubber. You want to hear the engines. Firstly, however, we head over to the champion. Yeah, we are in Austria. I live in a small city called Bregenz. And I moved here like three or four years ago because I lived in a big city, Frankfurt, before. And I just wanted to get uh, a bit more kind of an easy life, a bit more quiet. When I'm back home, I try to enjoy as much time as I can with my family. I just love spending time with my son, and with my girlfriend. It's always uh, yeah, going back to, to a normal life, let's say. That's what I like the best. And on the, on the side, I do some mountain bike in the mountains, some swimming, some longboarding, because we have some nice places around the lake here in Briggins. And especially in summer, it's quite nice. Simulator is a big part of preparation. So normally we do one day at Simulator at Audi Sport, one day at Rosberg before the race weekend. And if still I need some more laps, I go on my own simulator and just do some procedures. It's part of my success that I, I try to analyze everything and to understand everything. So what I did when I was already very young, something my, my father probably gave me because he's also like that. He's uh, writing down every lap, every lap time, every sector times, and he can analyze very well. And I think I just copied him. So um, that's what I do. And if you understand why somebody is quicker, then you only need to do it on, on track. We don't want uh, you know, any uh, stupid uh, mistakes from one or each other because if there's uh, contact, it always looks not that, not that nice. So, uh, you know, fighting against another manufacturer, you can always be a bit harder. Now as René Rash joins in the party, the DTM champion. Yeah. Yeah, for me, it's very important to have a, yeah, a hometown where it's a bit more relaxed and a bit more calm. I can sit in the corner somewhere in my garden, really relax and think about what happened during the race weekend. And coming from a big city, coming to here, you know, we have a lake in the background, we have the mountains, we have a lot of yeah, calm people. 
So I have all the, yeah, the ingredients I need basically for having the best performance on track as well. It's a decelerated life again and that's what I needed and obviously it's, it's a, uh, a lot more life quality compared to, to a big city. The defending champion. He is the man to beat. But who can pull it off? <laughs> well, difficult to say. I mean, obviously, we have six very different drivers. Uh, there's plenty of candidates um, within Audi. Rast is the one they are all after. And one of them came really close in 2019. Nico Muller, the sunny boy from Switzerland. Here is where I grew up, at the lake of Thun, pretty much. Yeah, been here, spending here many hours uh, as a kid already, and I came back to live close by here. I was in Bern in, in the city for five years, and uh, feels like it really feels like you know coming home, and it helps me settle down when I have days off, when I have time to spend with family and friends, and uh, I really enjoy being here. I like to cycle around the lake, I like to spend time on the lake. I, I can calm down, I can reflect on things, and look forward to what the future brings. He is relaxed, amicable, but is he fast enough for the next step? He has shown his potential clearly last, uh, last year and uh, he is in a position that he can win the championship. I think so, yes. Rast against Muller, a duel at the limit. You just need to deliver 100% every, every single time. I think that's what he's very strong at. And uh, if you want to beat him, you just need to, to do the same or a little bit better. And uh, I know what, what my goals and targets are. René Rast wants his third title, but so does he. Marco, as a double champion, obviously, is always the one. Last year, he was third. Marco Wittmann. In 2014 and 2016, he came out on top. His goal is clear. He wants to break out his dominance and finally get BMW back to the front. Well, the motivation is always high, you know. Um, but especially now, um, considering that I won it twice, and um, for sure, the goal is to, to get the third title. BMW is on its way, or at least that's what it sounds like. I don't know how they did it uh, when everything is frozen, but uh, it, the, the engine sounds quite different now, and uh, they, are, they are very strong from the beginning. We did some steps over the winter to improve the reliability on the cars. I don't know if that has an impact on the engine sound. To be honest, for me it sounds the same as last year. And he is always a strong candidate, Timo Glock. At 38 years, he's the oldest driver in the DTM and a champion in 2020. We definitely made a, a step in the right direction. For sure the car improved uh, a lot to, yet, to, to last year. For him, 2019 was a season to forget. I don't think about 2019 anymore because this was a uh, total, total waste of time for me, to be honest. With all the bad luck that Timo had last year, it must be over now with 19. He's back in the yellow car. And perhaps he can finally win his maiden title in his eighth season in the DTM. I don't have any pressure. At my age, you don't have pressure anymore. Timo Glock and Philip Eng together on their way to work. But once at the track, they put their friendship aside because there can only be one to win the championship. And the Austrian knows that every race is its own story. Well, I'm always ready. I'm, I'm born ready. So it will not be easy, but I will do my very best as always. Who will be the champion? With this amount of quality in the field, it can probably be any one of them. You just have to believe in yourself, don't you? Obviously, we all want to be champion. Um, that's, that's definitely on the top of my list. And of course, I will need to aim high and try to win the championship. That's the goal. And if you aim high, then you can also win high. In November, we will know who will be writing DTM history this year. But the action starts in the Ardennes in Belgium. The season opener at Spa-Francorchamps. The DTM is racing here for the first time since 2005. The track is one of the legendary venues in motorsport. It's great to have the DTM cars on that track and to start the season on that track is, is fantastic. 
I'm coming from Spa, so uh, I'm very happy that uh, to see those DTM cars going around the Rouge will be uh, terrific for the for the drivers. I'm sure this track will deliver great racing for, for the fans in front of the TV screens. Uh, it would have been nice to also welcome them on site, but uh, we'll do our best to deliver the show uh, also at home. The comeback at Spa, but due to the corona restrictions, no spectators will be able to watch the action live on site for the time being. Hopefully that will change during the season, because the fans are an important element in the DTM. In the future we hope that we will have the chance to also invite fans to the racetracks again, so that we can really show our exciting sports um, in a very close manner to fans at the, at the tracks, but obviously this is not, nothing we can influence. Everything is in motion and one is leaving. After this season, Audi is bowing out of Europe's most popular race series. Obviously, I would have wished to stay 10 more years in DTM. Um, yeah, but uh, yeah, it's sometimes it's, it's time to say goodbye. I'm grateful to Audi that they have given me this chance to, to compete on such a high level for, for such a great brand. And uh, yeah, the only thing I'm focused on is to end this chapter on a high. Clearly, we, we will put all in, really to not give the title to, to the Audis, um, the title should go to Munich. So we are looking forward to 18 races full of action, thrilling duels and many new stories. Over the winter I think BMW did a lot of homework to catch up with um, the slightly dominating Audi from last year. When I looked here to the test I think uh, they are now on a very similar level from lap time. So that means fans are going to see good races. That is the 2020 DTM. The waiting is over. It is time to make marks again. At last.